Ah, what a fine afternoon for a nice stroll. And for ascending to the role of Emperor! Yes, today shall indeed be a fine one, and as my first order of business, I will finally shut down that Daily Solutions podcast, which has been a thorn in my side and the side of our kingdom for far too long. But in the meantime, a walk. By myself, unattended, alone, unattended, on a nice stroll. <laughs> Quick! Oh, betrayal! Sorry, brother. But daily solutions must live. <laughs> Long live the knights of the intros. Damn that podcast. <laughs> All right, Okey salutations. Dokey. Welcome everybody. Yeah, hi there. Yeah, warm warm those hands up cuz Yeah, cuz what? It's your then you say oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good setup there. Yeah, it's like warm up. It's just like throwing the basketball out of bounds. <laughs> Where were you on that one? <laughs> Serious, I'm just the setup guy. <laughs> All right, today's question is: Hello, hello, hi, hi. We have purchased an ongoing float center. Uh, the disinfectant. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it matches with our other question from before. Yeah, um, <laughs> we, we should ask them. You know how they. We purchased an ongoing float center. The disinfectant of choice that previous owners used is chlorine, and UV, which we continue to use. I would like to change to HP. HP. Hydrogen peroxide, I'm sure <laughs> they mean. Do I have to dump my current water to switch over to HP? HP. Thanks. What's the name of that, like, steak sauce that they use in England? Is it HP, HP sauce? I okay. think it's HP, yeah. Hopefully that's not what they mean, because that would be, <laughs> I would strongly advise them against that. And it's probably antimicrobial. Yeah, and it probably would make the, the solution denser. So, <laughs> you know, I change, I'm going to go ahead and change my recommendation. Hey, you, you go ahead. You, you use, use the that HP, HP sauce. <laughs> Delicious, nutritious, maybe. All right, so so you got a bunch of chlorine in your water. Yeah. You want You want that to instead be hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Well, I guess first make sure that, that, that that's legal. And your health, de- your health department is okay. You know, there might be a reason that they were using chlorine, which right. could be health code or or something that you're required to actually use the setup they have. Mm-hmm. So d- double check that. But then, if if you can, if you are able to switch over, I mean, yeah, I mean, yes, yes is probably the answer that you can switch and and you won't have to drain the system. But I like before we jump into the the kind of details are a little bit. I no, jump. Don't jump. Hold on. Don't jump. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cannonball. The uh, I, it should be you should consider something, which is that let's say you have a chlorine and UV system, which is what this person said in their question. Right? Yeah. In that, that, that exactly scenario, said, typically chlorine would be viewed as the kind of primary disinfectant. That's the thing you're. That's your kind of biggest gun that you're leaning on, and and you're making sure is killing things. You know, if you have a chlorine UV system, it might be that your UV is is really light and and mm, yeah. not super you know hardcore and like that's kind of okay because the chlorine is killing stuff. If you switch to UV and hydrogen peroxide, the UV in that scenario becomes the thing that's the main oomph in your system, right? Yeah. So you got to be care- you're like switching what the primary it's disinfectant a, is. It's a good point because the the UV attached with the chlorine system might be super wimpy, you know, and it's just sort of there to add extra clarity and and get rid of some of the disinfection byproducts that chlorine is generating and it could totally not work as a primary disinfectant. So yeah, I mean, that's definitely a great thing to make sure you're double checking before you get into this. Yeah, like in your head you're switching chlorine for UV. And now that you're switching to UV, you're using hydrogen peroxide as an extra like oxidizer for it is kind of the more is what you should be thinking in your head as opposed to saying I'm replacing chlorine with hydrogen peroxide. So, I mean, let's talk for just one second about how they check that. Like how how do you look into whether or not your UV light might now be good enough to be the primary disinfectant? Great question. I would recommend listening to our episode about UV lights. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, listen to us some more is, is a great way to get it. I totally agree. Uh, all right, so assuming those two things, assuming that you're cleared by the health department to actually do this switch, and assuming that your UV light is good enough, or that you're just getting a new UV light, new UV light, which yeah. is going to be good enough. Now, do you have to get rid of chlorine in the water? Okay. Or can can you get rid of chlorine in the water without dumping it? Um. So. Things around hydrogen peroxide get a little bit looser in the kind of general pool and spa field of knowledge, but 
like I'm pretty sure hydrogen peroxide is used as a way of getting rid of chlorine. Like if you if you over chlorinate something or if you super chlorinate to deal with some sort of you know fecal incident or something like that, you know that's how one of the ways pools respond to contamination issues is by bumping the chlorine levels up. To get the chlorine levels back down, you can do a couple different things, and one of them is using hydrogen peroxide. It just like eats up the chlorine; they kind of destroy each other. Uh, so, like I I would say you don't have to drain your your float tank. You know, I, there's a lot of complicated chemistry that comes when you're dealing with chemicals and, and stuff like that. So, it's very likely that. I can say something like this and someone else would be like, oh, but don't forget that this one weird thing happens and something. But as far as I know and as far as I've heard and as far as I can tell from the fact that this seems to be something commonly done for this very purpose, uh, you should be all right. You should just be able to put hydrogen peroxide in there. The tricky thing is how you're going to measure that the chlorine is gone, which you can't. So you really just like, because the chlorine destroys the hydrogen peroxide, you really just put peroxide in there until the peroxide levels are stable. And once they're stable, that means the chlorine's no longer there to be eating up the peroxide. And my guess is, I mean, you could probably do this just over the course of a day that you're shut. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not something specifically that we've we've played around with, with like getting the, the chlorine levels totally uh, eradicated and getting hydrogen peroxide stabilized in that sense, because we've always been on, on hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Um, or at least we've never used chlorine. Uh, uh, but if you wanted to... Be careful. I mean, you can just like give it a couple days, air it out, make sure there's good mm-hmm. ventilation, make sure you're dealing with, you know, if disinfection byproducts are being created or whatever's happening in the process. But I don't know. I, I would be, someone would have to like give me some pretty serious arguments to convince me that you would need to drain it. Yeah. And I, w- I will not try to be that person. But <laughs> <laughs> that said, I, I do want to toss something in favor of considering draining it, which um. is... If you like, and this isn't even on the chemistry level, it's just you just took over a float center that's out there. Depending on when the last time their tanks are drained, I mean, it might just make sense to keep the chlorine in there and just do a full water switch over rather yeah. than dealing with this right now, you know? Um, like, they keep the chlorine. Well, oh, I mean, you mean for right now, trying to like, eradicate the chlorine. Don't just try to switch it. disinfection systems right now. Like, switch, switch to doing UV and then peroxide after they're going to already change out the water in the tanks. Or just, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the one of the things about running a float center is these float tank mysteries kind of happen in yeah. your in your float tanks and if you have float solution from before you were ever around it, it adds a lot of like question marks was so, the water filtered when it originally went into the float <laughs> tank yeah did they ever use spa enzyme cleaner in the float tank water like right. things like that you just don't know so there is something really nice about now that it's your center and you just took it over kind of starting from scratch for sure i i probably would do that yeah if See, you're taking so, over a place yeah so outside of the chlorine issue like yeah. just dumping it because you're taking over a new yeah. business and you just want to know have your knowledge kind of be clear from the beginning yeah for sure i agree with that nice good turnaround there yeah thanks okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you like how i started very gently i was I'm impressed not trying to i was you? like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be convinced <laughs> all right i got you <laughs> All right. If you have other questions, but hold wait, on. No, what? You're not done. I <laughs> no, thought that, done. Was, that was such a nice button. We finished. You know, and the banner was about to drop. <laughs> like mission accomplished. No, there's shit. Like if if you're in this situation, I, I the other thing I wanted to say is I've heard of people who are using chlorine and hydrogen peroxide as part of their routine. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're like on their deep clean day, adding some chlorine in as kind of an extra like buffer to to kill some stuff while they're on a hydrogen peroxide system. So I, for you, those of you out there, just make sure you understand this process, that those things can kind of like destroy each other and that it makes things hard to measure and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, theoretically, if I pretty much like if we had better ways of measuring chlorine, you could do that. Like you could shock your system with chlorine once a week and while no one's in there and be, have it be during your deep clean day and have it, you know, kind of whatever, not not be too worried about the disinfection byproducts. If you have good ventilation, you don't have people in there and then kind of switch back to, to peroxide. It's a little strange of a system because it, it's a little strange to me to think that you think the rest of your system is not good enough to handle the, <laughs> the Like you shouldn't be relying on like once a week making sure you're actually killing stuff. Um, but, you know, chlorine is more hardcore than hydrogen peroxide. That's for sure. Yeah. And more generally documented. Yeah. So, okay, now go for it. All right, if you have your own questions, <laughs> head on down to floatanksolutions.com slash podcast. Run, don't walk. We'll be waiting. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, get to put those hands in your pocket now. 
the nice and warm. <laughs>